Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where I am absolutely shaking looking at this Bitcoin chart. Oh, I am very, very happy to be bringing you this video today. Here we are right now at the $50,500 resistance level. And in this video, we'll be talking through, are we going to absolutely smash through this level to the upsides and head towards that $53,000 high? Or will we see a really big trap here? Get the longs trapped and plumbing, <laughs> plummet, plummet down through support levels for an ultimate bull trap and, you know, a very big dump in the Bitcoin shop. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you are looking forward to watching this video as much as I am looking forward to making it because uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm very, very, very happy right now, as you can probably tell. And uh, wow, without further said or do, let's get into the Bitcoin charts, get into what we love. Yeah, we absolutely love this. Trading Bitcoin using technical analysis. And uh, yeah, that's what we're all here for. We share the love, we share the passion and let's go. So as I said at the start of the video, we, ha we are, we are, we are making our way up towards this value area high. And obviously there's a bit of a backstory. Every chart has a story. Every artist has his uh, his ways of telling the charts, no? Um, because at the end of the day, this does seem like a little bit of art that we have going on here. Yeah, we're reading the pictures, we're analyzing the charts and we're coming away of high probability outcomes. And so you always have to go through the backstory. How did we get to where we are today? Yeah, started from the bottom, now we're here. And it all started obviously a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago when we were trading all the way back up then at $48,000. And obviously my plan at the time was, was basically Bears United, you know, dump it, ready for the dump below $40,000. So I want you to cast your minds back to when I done the trade of the week. Obviously this is only for the champions. I've done a trade of the week below $30,000 to long $29,000, e.g. take the liquidity below $30,000 and pump it. <laughs> and that was my same idea this time. Let's take the liquidity below $40,000 and absolutely pump it once again. You might be thinking, you know, <laughs> what else, what, what, what were the confluences that you had down and around here? Obviously, this was a trade of the week again that I gave for the champions two in a row here, catching the lows, by the way, a month in advance. A month in advance, being aware of the level at around that 39,500, 39,750 level, we had, we knew the support was there. It was just a case of waiting. It was a case of being patient, ready, and waiting. Obviously, it took a month to come down to that level, but ultimately, we got the level, what we wanted, and then we got to say, do it. <laughs> and obviously, for the people that missed it the first time, managing to get in their longs around that 39, 500 zone, that was the level we're ready and waiting for. It comes, we execute, and we've obviously shot up to the upside very nicely. So, and if we cast our minds back now to yesterday's video, where we had this initial range going on, yeah, this is a really, really, it was a nice range. It obviously held us sideways for a few days here, up and around that CC level. And this is the way that we kind of were looking at it. We were, you know, had great emphasis on our speed fans. And obviously the speed fan, we were seeing an old resistance, support, resistance, you know, support, support, support. We came up to the 7.5 here and we saw big resistance obviously, and we dropped back down. Where we dropped back down to ultimately was, this was obviously our low of the range, so slight front run of the low of the range, but a swing failure pattern of the last low that was made, okay, the last significant low that brought us up to that high. So we basically swing failure pattern this low, and this lower simultaneously, to be fair, while also finding support once again off of the speed fan. So it was a direct flip of the resistance into the, into the support. So we are finding support around the bottom of the channel, off of the flip of the speed fan, also getting your swing failure patterns. Obviously you were seeing bullish divergences as well. And here you are pushing back up through the top of the speed fans. So at this point, you've got to be thinking to yourself, well, you know, you're, you're through, you're, you know, you're through resistances. You actually managed to get back above this high and hold the high. You know, you've got to be thinking to yourself, obviously myself personally, I have had this underlying bullish bias for a while now. And on the live stream on Sunday for the champions, I deleted all my technical analysis. I thought, man, I've got a bullish bias. I, let's see if I can get rid of it. Deleted all my technical analysis, redone my technical analysis, and still ended with a bullish bias. I was still looking for higher. And uh, some people, by the way, were laughing at me for, for being bullish when we got that pullback. And this is what I just love to say. <laughs> Who's laughing now? Um, yeah, so still had that bullish bias during all of the move. 
And here we are coming up to our first major, you know, what we could refer to as a real major level right now. And that is, to be precise, 50,459. But we're looking at this really between 50, you know, 50,600, just below to, you know, 50,300, really. We have this bit of a zone. This is obviously the value area high of the overall range. This is the high term time frame range. Yeah, really big high term time frame range. So this is a level that we definitely... I, I think we just want to be aware of, yeah? It's one of these things. Can we can we smash straight through it like butter and it's not even there? Of course you can. But, you know, you, you always, you have to program your mind to think in terms of probabilities. So I will always tell you, anything is possible. Anything is possible in trading. But you don't care about what's possible. You care about what is probable. Yeah? So you've got to always think to yourself, okay, where are the highest probability trades? Where are the highest probability trades. Sometimes it takes a month to wait for, but you get your entry, you get your high probabilities, and well, you walk away like a chad, absolutely laughing. So this is, for me, a high probability region of resistance. Does it mean that I'm going to blindly short there? No, of course not. You know, I'm, I'm personally recognized the, the, the low of 39,500 as a swing long position. Ultimately, I do think that we can definitely push higher, you know, pushing to 53, 54, 55, $56,000. Of course, I believe this. But I do recognize that this is a potential zone of a pullback. And then we can monitor how that pullback goes. Is this a full blown? Do we get a full blown rejection? Do we get the high put in on Tuesday once again? Well, time is going to tell. Currently, analyzing the charts, looking at the probabilities, looking at the data that we have, there does not, there has not been a rejection. The volume is nice. The open interest is good. So in terms of probabilities and remembering that they change, they can change like bam, instantly. You know, by the time the video is uploaded, we could have seen a pullback. But as I'm speaking right now, there has been no rejection. The volume is good. The open interest is good. It's all following the move to the upside. And that is obviously classed as bullish. So Ultimately, yes, I, I remain with a bullish bias and I, I am still looking for that tap of the value area high, to be honest with you at the moment. I have no reason to think otherwise. And then if we do tap it and we do get a big rejection, well, that's when I can start to analyze, OK, have we seen a have we seen a significant high here to look for a significant pullback to our support levels? Or are we actually looking for this to you know slice through like butter? And this is the this is the thing you you got to obviously you got to know how to read the charts you got to know how to read volume to analyze this. But nevertheless, if you if you have that skill, then you know it's it's a simpler case of waiting for the level, waiting for the reaction, and then making an informed decision. So I'm you know I'm I'm, I'm fairly safe at saying that we got this fifty thousand five hundred level, or a little bit of a zone. Remember, it is a little bit of a zone of resistance here. If we are clearing this and if we are holding it as support, you know, you've got your $51,000 and then, yeah, I'll be looking up to $53,000, which is our last high. So if I just hide this a second and we come back onto the daily chart, obviously this last high, you know, it's going to be a bit of a significant level uh, coming in there at, <clears throat> you know, basically $53,000. And we can see there. Yeah. So basically, uh, I would say our local resistance of the value area high is from 50600 uh, being the, the, the high of the resistance, uh, of, obviously to that 50,500. So, so, you know, you've got a few hundred dollars zone there of, of, of the resistance that you obviously are coming up to now. Um, can you get through it? Yes, but, you know, you've got to trade in terms of probabilities. This is obviously a, a resistance zone. Um, if we do get through that resistance and start to hold it as support, uh, yes, I would be then looking up towards 50, 000, about 50,100, get through this. I would be looking for back towards these highs $53,000. Okay. Should we, should we reject uh, here at the, you know, at this zone on the Bitcoin chart, then obviously we are looking for our retracements. We can see uh, currently a little, you know, so our, well, actually, so Bybit is trading the highest right now. Uh, Binance and uh, Coinbase are slightly trading below. So you might get some funding changes shortly, but you obviously have, <clears throat> excuse me, you have your biggest support, definitely, I would say, you're, you know, without a doubt for me, your biggest support there is coming in at around 48k. If you pull your fib here, pull your fib here from the low to the high. Yeah, so you can see you got your really big high volume node coming in here, the low of this obviously coming in at around 47,700, which should be around your uh, 786. 
so that's set at 47,500. So you can see like your zones of support here. What you can see is you have a bit of a high volume, you know, not massive high volume node, but nevertheless, you've got your intraday intraday support there coming in at about 49,000. So it's like just levels you want to be aware of if you do get the pullbacks. So you'd be looking, obviously, for your first intraday support around 49,200 uh, to the to the lows of around 49K. DG, 49K is your intraday support. If you lose your intraday support and you can look towards your, you know, mm, I would still refer to this really as an intraday, maybe day traders support of around 47,600. If you lose 47,600, well, then I, I, I personally think you're going to be looking back down to the old of the low range. And if you lose that, well, once again, you're going to be looking back to, towards that, you know, forty four, forty three thousand dollars $43,000. So it is, it is a chart that personally, as I'm speaking right now, I, I remain bullish on. I remain in a swing long. I'm more than happy to, you know, hold into longs right now. I am aware that we are reaching resistance. You know, I'm aware of the levels. I am aware that this is a higher term time frame level. And I'm definitely going to obviously be monitoring the reaction off of this. And we are definitely aware of the support levels to the downside and how a move to the downside can start off slow, but accelerate. Yeah. And what we mean by this is the acceleration to the downside as momentum picks up. If we are losing our intraday support levels, you know, bam, like this, you're at 40, 44, $43,000, you know. So, of course, we have to be prepared you have to be prepared. It would be naive not to be prepared for a big move to the downside. You could have potentially run liquidity off the $50,000, but we just haven't quite seen that yet. Yeah, we remain with our bullish market structure. We remain with our good volume. We remain with our good open interest. It isn't until you see the market structure change that you would really see a confirmation of that short position, e.g. giving you some trap longs. It's not quite happened yet. I am aware that it can happen. If it happens, I'm not going to be scared to take a trade. You know, <laughs> I'm not a type of guy that gets scared. You know, I'll execute. And obviously, I'm a bit lucky in the terms of I've got, got a nice swing long position. And, you know, then I'll try and hedge, hedge myself should we see a, a bit of a pullback to the downside. But that all came, of course, from being prepared. Being prepared, having a plan, executing the plan, and then sticking to the plan even when others were saying that I'm going to be wrong. That's what you get for having the bullish bias. <laughs> Got to trust in the process, trust in the chart champions. It's not often we're wrong. And um, yeah, there you go. That was This was a relatively quick video that I wanted to bring you today. Obviously, just going through the support levels to the intraday, the higher term time frame to the upside, the levels that if we break through the level, the level we're looking towards next. If we break for our support, the level we would be looking towards next. You see how I'm trading here? It's a level to level game. Yeah, it's all done from my you know, very much in-depth technical analysis where I am spending over hours doing the analysis, doing the hard work. And then when I come on these videos, I've already done all the hard work and I'm just reading out some levels. But it all comes down to, you know, going harder than everybody else in the game. To be the best, you've got to, you've got to put in the most amount of work, period. Yeah. If you get complacent, if you get lazy, you're going to you're going to fall off. And I don't want to fall off. I like being the best. So <laughs> I'm going to put in the work, basically. So thank you ever so much. If you have enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Smash that like button as hard as you can. If you want to get the heads up on these type of levels, well, that is for the champions at chartchampions.com. If you want to see the magic lines, again, that is for the champions at chartchampions.com. That's where you could have been aware of the levels of the trades, you know, literally weeks in advance before it happened. And, uh, you know, for everybody else, they get to see it on YouTube and Twitter a little bit later when it occurs. But nevertheless, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope you've taken something educational away from this video. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, you all know what's going to be coming up here. The lovely little outro video that we have here to say, unfortunately, or fortunately, for however you'd like to refer to this as, not financial advice. This is an educational entertainment stream only. So make sure you understand that legal disclaimer. And uh, my friends, my family, my champions, I hope you have enjoyed. I honestly have enjoyed making it. A uh, big smile on my face. Hope you have a smile too. Don't forget to take profits. Don't forget to reward yourself. Do not get greedy. We are at resistance. Let's see if we can break it. Thank you ever so much, everybody. Have an absolutely wonderful day. And I'll see you in the live stream tomorrow. Contenders live stream, Wednesday, the 6th of October. See you in that one. And uh, that will be my next video in the Contenders live stream. So cheers, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day and good bye. Yeah. <laughs> cheers.